Hello and welcome to a bike show that is this week absolutely stuffed, full of new model news and other interesting tidbits from the international and local scenes. And although I am stuck in my van in a car park in a hilltop town in Tuscany, Italy, we are going to start with a Don and a hero on the loose in Cape Town. Hello and welcome to Cape Town, your average European city in Africa. Beautiful scenery, lovely old buildings, chilled out people, and um, traffic, lots of it. Which is kind of weird because Cape Town is half the population density of Johannesburg, and yet the average Cape Town citizen spends more time sitting in traffic jams. <laughs> How about that? Mostly, it's because the roads are somewhat European, narrow and busy. Driving a car here is just, well, ridiculous. And you can guess what our solution is. <laughs> of course, it's a motorcycle, particularly this one. It's a Hero X-Pulse 200. And not only is it from the world's largest motorcycle manufacturer, but it's also its top model. Built in India, the kings of congestion. To help beat the flow, the X-Pulse has a 200cc single-cylinder two-valve air-cooled motor pushing 17.8 horsepower and 16.4 newton meters of torque. And simple isn't always a bad thing, provided you're not in a big hurry, that's okay. Because here's the thing, I mean this thing will go, will keep going forever. And that's kind of the point. And besides, you know, it's enough power to get past, well, these guys. <laughs> Bye bye cars, bye bye cars, bye bye cars. <laughs> Suckers, all of you. Although it's not all strictly simple, that motor is fed by electronic fuel injection and that dash is digital. It even has navigation. Also, simple doesn't necessarily mean simply made. From a distance, this looks like quite simple, and in some ways it is, but then when you get close up on this thing and you look at some of the actual components, like this triple clamp, I mean, these are really rock hard solid things. And while everything on this motorcycle, I mean, the screen, mirrors, these switches, uh, just the components. I mean, everything here is just sort of solidly well mounted, well made and made to last. And uh, that's important. And then there's its party trick. So this bike can indeed go off road, but um, can't really hear. I mean, we're in the middle of Cape Town. There are a few like dirt bits up in the mountains there, but that's what you call illegal. They will arrest you if I ride this there. However, that's not the end of the world. We have ridden this bike off road. If you remember a few months ago, we did a thing with Dirt to Trail magazine where we did ride this thing off road with a bunch of other bikes. In fact, at that stage, I'd only ridden it off road and it was magnificent. It, like I said, it says on the box, go anywhere, simple machine, not the fastest, but go anywhere. It's small, it's compact, it's light, it can get anywhere. You can easily pick it up if you fall over or sit behind Cape Town cars that are taking forever. And all of that stuff translates into this congestion, to this traffic, because again, I mean, you go anywhere. I'm sitting higher, slightly higher. I've got a good view over, and yet it's not big and cumbersome and tall. I'm still light enough. I can zip through traffic. It's comfortable, it's happy. That front wheel is 21 inches and the rear is the traditional 18 inches. The suspension travel is 190 millimeters, carrying a motorcycle with a curb weight of just 157 kilograms. There's more things, you've got this nice dash here. It's not a full TFT dash like you get on like a Panigale or something, but you know, it's nice. And it's got a bit of a screen, keeps whatever wind there is, not that you're going that fast. I mean, you'll get about 120 kilometers per hour, but you'll cruise at 100 all day. The seat's nice and comfy, the sitting position's comfy, everything works. And I'm not sitting in traffic. The brakes are disc brakes, which is quite something, because a lot of people in India don't like disc brakes, they're quite happy with drum brakes, and fair enough. On a lot of those sort of roads, you can't brake all that hard. So, yeah, these brakes, I mean, I wouldn't compare them to the latest Brembo's, but if you want to stop, pull the lever, it stops. If you want to stop faster, pull the lever a bit harder. It works. 
Well, so the suspension works. I mean, it's not hell of a sponge cakey. It's quite comfy, actually. But the X-Pulse is not just about cities and hopping pavements. It's built to go, well, anywhere. So here's the thing. This bike is not the fastest in the world, it's not the most sophisticated, it's not the most any of that, but sheesh, 42,000 Rand, you own one of these, brand new, and it'll last forever, and it will last forever because people in India ride these things forever. They don't buy new ones, they keep riding the ones they've got. But, and it'll keep going forever, everywhere. I mean, we just went through Cape Town CBD, it was brilliant, it was absolutely brilliant. Got through, no problem, perfect. We're now out on this country, windy country road. I'm having a great time. And it works just as well. As I said, it worked very well off-road. We didn't take it off-road on this, cir this circumstance, but it's been off-road. It'll go anywhere. And that's the thing. I mean, if you want to get on a motorcycle and ride throughout the world, this is the sort of thing you want to be on. It won't, it, it won't break down, but if it does, good chance the local huts with the side of the road will be able to fix it. They'll probably have spares for this thing. That's how popular heroes are. 42,000 Rand. That's worth it. It's very, very worth it. That is undoubtedly a lot of bike for not a lot of money. If you're after economical affordable and hugely reliable transport for personal or commercial duties, but also want proper build quality and a decent level of technology, like an integrated app-based navigation system, then you can't ignore what the world's biggest motorcycle manufacturer has got to offer. Hero may be at the more affordable end of the biking spectrum, but don't underestimate the success story of this now mammoth organization. It competes in India and competition there is extremely fierce and to survive and thrive over the long term, you have to make a product that will last and that you can keep servicing and repairing for many years into the future. It's not just the immediate value of the bike that makes it an attractive proposition, but the long-term feasibility of it. Even in something like a professional delivery role where it can be maintained to a level that ensures it will keep working safely and efficiently for hundreds of thousands of kilometers. Okay, time for a short break, and then when we return, it'll be with Fired Up.